Oh, sorry about that. Um, my screen recording program, this free one I'm using only, lets me do uh, 15 minutes at a time. So um, anyway, what I figured out here on this placement, um, and I don't know how this got this way. Um, again, I try to avoid this, but this this kind of placement unless I really need to. Um, but it's in special tools under note position tools. So the actual note positioning was changed. What's nice about the note position tool, unlike say changing note positions in the measure tool, is that you can press backspace and it gets back to where it should, should go. Um, yeah, so that's nice. And also for what it's worth, as you can see, the note spacing to like automatic, applying automatic note spacing ignores um, that that spacing and that may be a setting in finale you know I, I should really uh, maybe figure that out exactly how that acts because I can never seem to keep track of like what what note spacing changes happen like get erased by applying note spacing versus uh, what don't um, here in preferences um, I think it's in preferences yeah under edit <clears throat> Oh well, it's somewhere. It might. Is there a document? Anyway, um, I actually I, I enjoy I I enjoy doing this recording right now partially because um, I'm forced to admit something that I'm not super clear on that by now you'd think I'd be clearer on. So maybe I'll look into that later. But for now, uh, I can press backspace and that lines that note back up nicely. So for you, if you if you see a weird note thing like that, and you're like, why is that space that way? What happened? Who knows how this got this way? It could very well be a thing that my client did. Let's see what it looks like in page view. Um, either the client or maybe a previous copyist. I don't know how old this piece is. Um, might have placed it differently for some reason. And it's possible even that um, maybe they were trying to avoid this cleft because they didn't know how to properly get the spacing right with the clef, which um, which would be odd. It's a little bit of a mystery. Anyway, um, one thing I also noticed I'm not doing right now is noticing that all of this is my job here. I've noticed that the right hand is all natural notes and the left hand is all black notes, and so I should uh, go through and put in lots and lots of naturals, basically. We have D and A in the base, so we really need uh, D flat and A flat in the base, I mean. Really need naturals everywhere. And there are conflicting opinions about the use of these things, but I tend to like to, if there's a cross relation between the right and the left uh, voice in the piano, right and left hand in the piano, I tend to gravitate towards just putting a, a flat or natural on everything. Because that really reinforces, I think that pianists have sort of an intuitive understanding or a general approach that like if, if a note is flat in one hand it'll probably be flat in the other hand and that that's so intuitive for most people raised in the classical canon that um, reminders like this really don't hurt I think this is just one pianist I'm not much of a professional pianist or anything I've been playing piano since I was seven and I'm 37 now but um, I'm not nearly as as experienced as some folks uh, that's probably sufficient Actually, we should put the uh, A natural there, too. Um, and, you know, honestly, because B flat is the most common flat, I might even just put a flat on a uh, natural on there, too, just to be extra extra safe. You know, when you're writing these, these things out, also, you want to keep in mind, like, the set, the context, too. So this, uh, this piece, you know, it's very possible that, like, this is going to be read by professional accompanist. I mean, I know from my, my choir experience that our accompanist was someone who just played like all day, all the time, and was super good at sight reading. And even someone who's super good at sight reading, I like to make their life a little easier. Um, and that's always a balance, sort of finding the, the balance between condescension and help. Um, so anyway, I'm not actually going to do that right now. I'm going to do another pass later for uh, accidentals. Because right now I'm kind of talking and rambling about um, about hairpins and dynamics, um, and I was going through to kind of just look at the spacing. That's I think what I'm doing in this pass is a spacing. 
And I would recommend to people who are using Finale this way, um, don't try to do everything in one pass. Try to uh, try to kind of narrow down your, your the scope of what you do at any given time. So that's why I'm just looking at the piano part, uh, and I'm just looking at spacing right now, and I'm noticing things that I want to come back to later. Um, here's a spacing issue. Who knows why this is this way, and it might not even look this way in page view, because um, spacing things... Here's another area where I'm not super clear, but spacing between scroll view and page view is eh, not always consistent, but whichever view we want, we'd like spacing to look nice. So my, again, default, I control A, hit 4, and that didn't fix it. <laughs> I don't know why that didn't get fixed. Um, this is one of those areas where it's like, why is this this way? And if you look, let's see, very possible that this spacing thing here comes from some sort of like legacy finale weirdness. <laughs> Because, again, we're it's 2018 when I'm recording this. This file is 10 years old, and I remember to Finale 2006. Um, that was, you know... Finale, I feel, has only really gotten, like, decent. I mean, it's always been super powerful. But it's actually, like, only started to get halfway decent as a, as a written program recently. Like, with 2012 and 14. You know, I think it was 9 that they introduced dynamic parts, which you'd think they would have had from the start. Sibelius had it way longer. Um, anyway, so what's going on with these? Let's... it might just be this thing again. Nope. Okay, so I'm I'm, I'm a little stumped. Um, I've tried note spacing, and I've tried deleting manual stem, or not stem, but uh, manual note positions. It's not going to be note head positions now. Um, and I really don't want to touch the, the, the measure thing, but I might have to. I might have to adjust. Now, when you do that adjustment with measures, oops, now it's looking okay in page view. So maybe I'll just leave it alone. But when you do that kind of adjustment with measures, the measure tool, it adjusts the entire stack. Meaning like if you, this is looking weird. So if I want to adjust, um, this is maybe not the best example because none of these have a right and left. Well, look at that. You see, when I adjust that, it adjusts the left hand as well. Everything, it adjusts the sort of vertical alignment of all of the notes for that particular beat, that particular time uh, in, in measure. And those cannot be manually removed as far as I know. Um, you can't, like, I can't press backspace on them. I can't. You know, actually, they can't be removed. I'm sorry. This is okay. So this is this is where Finale just continues to confuse me. In this case, it seems as though uh, the the measure stack or the measure um, th these measure settings here um, go away when when you uh, do a note spacing thing, which I wish I knew how to get rid of, and I feel like I've messed around with these preferences somewhere. Is it view? thought it was an edit. There's some screen somewhere, and I feel like I've tried this, and um, either way it's, an, it's, it's frustrating because there's, there's just not a whole lot of consistency. And in this case, there are some times when I really do want to retain. I want a re easy way to remove manual placement, but I don't want them to go away when I, when I do, you know, automatic spacing. So that's a frustrating thing, but fortunately it looks like in page view I'll probably destroy these system locks anyway, but in page view we can we can do it so that it won't get scratched up. So anyway, continuing. So this sort of under the hood stuff may seem time consuming, and it, it's extra time consuming now because I'm talking and rambling about finale, but um, this kind of stuff can really help down the road with when you want to change the spacing of your music, add music, change the systems, uh, edit parts. You, you really want things to be assigned properly. You want, um, like already here, this is going to be a little weird. If this were a, an instrumental part, notice how the, uh, the handle here is at an angle, meaning that finale has memorized 
that this hairpin is going to start X number of units. I don't know what it uses internally, but some sort of, you know, like inches or centimeters or whatever to the right of, um, of the actual beat, which will look fine in any measure this size. But if the measure were suddenly to become smaller, which it often is in parts, um, it would, it potentially could mess with the spacing. It's not actually messing with the spacing too bad right now. Um, you know, this is unavoidable sometimes. You just have to adjust them to the right, but you can also do something like this to where now this will always be attached to that beat and that'll probably never collide no matter what the measure looks like. So, um, yeah. So a lot of, you know, a lot of folks who don't know Finale very well, they're, they're just going to do it well enough. And I can't blame them because it's a complicated variable program. So that's why it's sort of my job. You know, it's, it's our job as copyists to go through and make sure everything is lined up right and kind of not make it so that the composer or sometimes the arranger, whoever, isn't bothered with sort of like details that they don't really need to know. Here's another thing that this is yet again reminding me of something that I need to look into more, which is automatic placement or default placement of dynamics and how to deal with that. Because right now with this default placement of dynamics, um, we're justified in the center, which is, you know, whatever, fine. Left of primary note head, um, which in this case, the primary note head is the rest. But we see this, the M is clashing with the, the bar line which is a drag. We don't want to have to manually adjust that every time that happens. Um, I'd actually be curious to other longtime Finale users, like what their default dynamic, like below the staff, dynamic placements are, or do they actually, do you actually go in and, and like manually change the MPs and the MFs because they're, they're wider. Um, I've tried it with left, left, um, I've tried it with like left alignment, like, um, if I just duplicate this real quick and I have it on the left, I might actually have a little tiny bit of offset point, maybe prime, something like that. So that now it avoids the bar line. But that's a little bit of a hack, I admit. Um, so here are the pedal markings. Um, most of this is like a simile pedal, pedal thing. Actually, there aren't very many pedal markings at all. It seems to be a really simple pedal scheme. Um, and this client likes likes this kind of pedal marks. Um, I don't have a strong opinion about them. Some people like the lines. Um, this is this seems to be a bit more of a classical romantic thing. I'm not super sure actually, but um, so now I'm going to go through and do some like now that I've just gone through with placement of, of dynamics and normally this would take way way shorter because but I'm rambling at you so um, uh, it's taking longer here's a weird thing here's a spacing thing I didn't catch before and I don't know what that's about that could be another special tools let's see yeah somehow somehow that got did you see that all three of those the rest the note and then the following rest they all got placed strangely and this is something you have to be aware of. When you're getting older Finale files, um, there's just going to be all sorts of funny, weird artifacts in there from stuff that the composer doesn't know how to do, stuff that their previous copyists didn't know how to do, or things that Finale just was never capable of in 2007 or 1998 that have carried through, you know, uh, sort of legacy features, as it were. And unfortunately, uh, I don't think there's a way to do this in mass. Okay, another thing with Finale, there's some ways to do things in mass, and there are other things that you can't do in mass without a plugin. And it just occurred to me that maybe there's a plugin for this. Um, speaking of plugins, by the way, if you as if you are a professional Finale user, what are you doing watching this channel? You know this stuff already. Um, but <coughs> JW Change, shameless plug. Jari, uh, Jari Williamson, I think is his last name. Oh my god, this, this should be part of Finale. 